Is anyone happy to call God their friend this morning? Yes, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's better to be on his side and for him. Yes. Hallelujah. And to call him friend. Say, who am I that you are mine for loving me? That you hear me?
Bless your name, God. God Almighty. Come on and ready your hearts this morning as we prepare our hearts and minds for worship. The call to worship is simply that. It is calling the saints to gather together for worship. And that's why David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I don't know about you this morning, but I was so glad when I heard that we were getting ready for worship. And it's time to worship today. And I made this determination in my heart that I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth my soul shall make her boast in the lord and the humble will hear thereof and be glad and so i ask that you would do this favor oh magnify the lord with me and let us exalt his name together oh right where you are stand on your feet lift up your your head and lift up your praise unto god right now for he is worthy to be praised you ought to magnify him right there in your living room. Give him glory right there in the kitchen. Praise his name right where you are because he is worthy of all of our praises. Lift up your voices, clap your hands right now and magnify the Lord because he is truly worthy. Yes, Lord, you are worthy. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We bless your name right now. We magnify you and we lift you up. We give you glory. You are worthy, O oh Lord. You are worthy, O oh Lord. You are worthy. You are worthy, O oh Lord. We magnify you. We lift up our voices unto you today. Lord, we ask that as we come into this place together, that you would allow your spirit to move upon every heart. That they may recognize that you are truly God. And there is none like you, for you alone are worthy and truly worthy of all of our praises. Here is your weekly impact news. Wednesday mornings, join our prayer call to hear a devotional message and the weekly updates from Pastor Carter from the series Coping with the Crisis. The call starts at 6 a.m. This week, Bible study classes will not be in session. We are currently on break. Pastor Carter is asking that you access Right Now Media during your normal Bible study group time for personal devotion. Sunday morning, our Christian Education Department presents the Fall Series, Love One Another, Get Involved. Class starts at 9.15 on Zoom. And now, a message from our student ministry. Hi, UTAP parents. My name is Candace Reynolds. I'm one of the student ministry leaders for our Impact Ministry. During the pandemic, we focused on engaging our students in creative ways with the Word of God. Through Zoom, students were able to participate in scavenger hunt activities and even create videos using the acts of prayer. Students also learned about characters in the Bible such as Job and Nehemiah. Our main priority is to ensure that we raise up the next generation of young Christian leaders. I'm here today to invite you and your students to get involved in our fall session of Student Impact Ministry Night. Student Impact Ministry will be held October 13th at 6 p.m. via Zoom. It's going to be lit, y'all. Can't wait to see you there. UTAB is online. Visit our website at www.uniontabernacle.org. Follow us on Instagram and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. This has been your Impact News. God bless.
always providing just for me. Great is your mercy, I feel. Great is your grace. Great is your mercy towards me. Your
Good morning. Bow with me. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. From the place where the sun rises to the place where it goes down, Lord, your name is still worthy to be praised. There is nobody like you. Lord, we love you and thank you for this and other opportunity to look together into your word. We pray that as we open the scriptures that you will open our understanding. Help us, O oh God, to clearly know what your word says, what it means, but most importantly, how it applies to our lives. For the living out of these days, take me out of myself and fill me with your spirit. Stand where I stand. Speak for me so that your people may be helped in here. Forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. And then use me for your glory and our good as our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praises shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble will hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. How many people are just glad again to be in worship on another Sunday morning? Listen, I want to tell you that when we were younger, we sing a song that says, I'm glad to be in the service one more time. And the reason why we were glad is because we had a perspective about our ability to be in service. It was that the Lord didn't have to let us live. And listen, if you woke up this morning, even from your home, from your living room, that means you're alive and you ought to just go ahead and stand to your feet. Put your, put your phone down and lift your hands up and give God praise because he didn't have to let you live. He's been good. He's been great. He has been kind. Listen, as we begin to look at the word this morning, I was taken a bit back by the news of the exoneration of those men who senselessly murdered Breonna Taylor. And where we were in our sermon series do not match what our heart needs to say. At a time like this, we're experiencing so much in our day, it's important that as pastor we keep our ear and our heart bent towards what the Lord is saying to us weekly. And so the Lord led us to a rather familiar passage of scripture. You've heard me preach many times before, and I think it fits with our emotions and all that is it that we are experiencing in our world today. Psalm chapter 3. It's a psalm attributed to David when he fled from Absalom, his son. Psalm chapter 3. There in the reading of the word of God is this, a psalm of David when he fled from Absalom, his son. O Lord, how many are my foes? Many are rising against me. Many are saying of my soul, there is no salvation for God, for him in God. But you, O Lord, are a shield about me, my glory and the lifter of my head. I cried aloud to the Lord and he answered me from his holy hill. I lay down and slept. I woke again, for the Lord sustained me. I will not be afraid of the many thousands of people who have set themselves against me all around. Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God, for you strike all my enemies on the cheek. You break the teeth of the wicked. Salvation belongs to the Lord. Your blessing be on your people. As you take your seats right in your homes, I want to label the message for the time that we have to share this morning, the advantages of adversity. The advantages of 
adversity. How can we take advantage of the adversities in which we now live? When I saw the news this week and saw that those officers who broke into the wrong house and ultimately killed an innocent person in their own home, in their own bed, my heart was gripped to disturbing. I got to tell you that I turned the TV off and I almost screamed out loud in my home because I'm just tired of it being okay to mistreat colored or black people. I think that it's important for us in this day and in this time to really look at what's happening around us and see that there are some ways in which we can benefit from all of the burdens that we are dealing with. I mean, we are dealing with a three-headed monster, a pandemic on the loose. The police are killing more people then they are protecting, and then we have the world of politics, which I don't have sermon time to waste on all that we experience in the political arena, but let me tell you that there are some advantages to the adverse situations that are on the rise. This pandemic has closed the doors of our building, but I thank God it has opened the doors to our ability to spread the gospel nationally and internationally. I'm sad that it took a pandemic for the church to break down its walls and reach to the world that needs to know, but isn't it just like God to allow an adverse situation to push you to the point where you have to do things his way. Sometimes life is just hard. I wish that we would not market God or church or salvation in a way that tells people that if you come to Jesus and join the church, everything is going to be all right. And I want to say that it is going to be all right, but we can't market it in that way because the truth is sometimes situations get worse before they get better. Sometimes there are moments where God pushes us to the brink of giving up and wanting to throw in the towel, not knowing how we're going to make it until we discover that he is the one who is able to deliver you in and through everything that you face. Listen, David knows, the writer of this text knows all too important what it's like to face adverse situations. You see, the contextual background to this passage can be found in uh, 2 Samuel chapters 15 and 16. There you will find David's family is going through a bit of dysfunction. You see, David found himself smack dab in the middle of the justice of God. David is reaping the seeds that he, his sins have sown when he slept with Bathsheba, got her pregnant, and had her husband killed. It's been years now since the baby has died, the husband has been buried, and his son Absalom rapes his daughter Tamar who told her brother Absalom, who then kills Amnon. Listen, David's family is doing exactly what the scriptures suggest because of his sin that there will be trouble at his own house. I need to tell you that there are some situations that come to us because our common enemy is attacking us and is against us. But then there are other things that happen in our lives, in our bodies, in our circumstances that are our own doing. Yes, I said it. Let me put it where you can get it. Maybe the real enemy is enemy. You'll get that uh, on your way home. I need to tell somebody here today who is listening to my voice that there are going to be problems in your life. 
that there are going to be some adverse situations that you cannot yourself control the outcome. In fact, somebody here who's listening over the, over the internet can testify that although you're dressed up and pressed up, although you logged on to Facebook and by now you've watched two or three sermons, the truth is you're still in a bad situation. Your situation has not changed. Adversity comes to our lives sometimes because of our adversaries, sometimes because of our friends who have turned into enemies. Yes, that they smile at you in your face when all the while they want to take your place. Some adverse situations come from enemies. Others come because of Satan and others come because of ourselves. As long as the sun is shining, you and I lift our hands and praise God. But can you praise God during a pandemic? Can you praise God during your pain? Can you praise God in this political foolishness? Can you trust that God is still in control? Sometimes it's not until you experience the adversity of being weak that you realize how strong your God is. Sometimes it's not until you experience the adversity of being sick that you realize that your God is a healer. It, sometimes it's not until you're standing at the grave site of a loved one that you discover that God is a comforter. Sometimes God has to let your heart be broken so that you can discover that he is the mender of a broken heart. Listen, let me tell you what I stood to tell you because I don't have a lot of time to tell you. So here it is. When we experience adversity, run to God in believing prayer. It's not deep. It's not long. It's rather simple that when you experience the adverse situations in your life, you must simply learn how to pray. This psalm is a lament. It's a lament at a time when David's life has gone from bad to worse. David, in the midst of a bad situation, has been run out of town by his own son who has convinced his closest counselors to turn against him. His smooth words and good looks have caused David to be run from the throne and they shout these insults at King David as he leaves the throne. He leaves his home at the hand of a family member. What do you do when your situation goes from bad to worse? How do you handle life when you are doing what God told you to do and still God allows difficulty to take advantage of you. Listen, I want to tell you that you got to learn how to take those adversities and turn them into advantages. The, number one, if you're taking notes, first of all, verses one and two will tell you that you got to admit your troubles to God. Verses 3 through 6 will tell you you got to affirm your trust in God. And verses 7 and 8 will inform you that you have to anticipate your triumph through God. Let me walk you through it as quickly as I can. First, there, there is the admission of trouble. You see, the historical background here has already informed us that God is allowing trouble and tribulation to come into David's life in order to show David what justice looks like. David is reaping the sins of his past in his present, but yet God, even though he's allowing David to be punished, listen, you got to be thankful that God his, still has his hand on you. David complains. Da David cries out to God and tells God, God the magnitude of the misery that he is experiencing. David brings this complaint to the Lord. It's found uh, when you look at the repetition of the word many. 
that David says, how many are my foes? He says, many are rising against me. Then third time he says, many are saying of my soul, there's no salvation for him and God. It is almost as if David looks up to God and says, hey, can't you see how much I'm going through? Who am I talking to today? Have you ever turned in prayer to God as if to inform God about something in your life that God is not aware of? God has placed you. God has anointed you. God has purposed you so that God can use you. And sometimes God has to allow the adverse situations to prepare you for what God has for you. God sometimes will allow adversity to come into your life so that you can come to him. So you know what happens with us? When everything is going A-OK, when money is, is good and jobs as well and health is fine and family is growing, we, don't, we ain't thinking about God. As long as we got our nice car and our nice house and our, uh, and our nice suburb, our children are protected and educated, we've done the best that we can to, to accomplish what seems to be the American dream. It's not until God allows your comfortable life to be interrupted by adversity that you turn to God and pray. Sometimes God has to let the worst happen to you so that you can turn to him and tell. I like it because David is not flowery with his words. He's not trying to impress God. He simply wants to tell God all about the problems that he is facing. He says, I got a lot of people that are on my back. He said, I got a lot of enemies that are on my trail. I got much to be worried about. Lord, he, listen, I want to tell you that when you experience the adversities in life, the first step that we need to make sure that we make is to take our problems to God. I want to tell you that God can handle your complaint. This, this, this is a complaint. This is almost David crying the blues to God, telling God all about his problems. I, I like the fact that he went to God. I don't necessarily care for the fact that he's whining about it. I don't particularly care for complainers. But listen, I want to tell you, God can handle your complaint. God can handle you being real and honest and open with him and telling him, Lord, I've done the best that I can. I still got enemies on my trail. I still got problems in my family. But, but David tells God about his problems so that he can point quickly to God's solution to those problems. I'm sure you've been there. You may not be facing these imminent military attacks that David was experiencing, but all of us know what it's like to have an enemy on your trail. All of us knows what it's like to have weapons and, and, and bullets uh, flying at you. Maybe not uh, physical bullets, but, but maybe spiritual darts the enemy is throwing at you. All of us know what it's like to be up against overwhelming opposition. You got to learn that God, hear it, can handle your problem. That, that, that no matter how big or how small that problem may seem to be, God, God can handle it. Uh, Elijah Hoffman was a pastor who was counseling a member. And this member told him all of the long list of problems that she was dealing with. And after pausing for a brief moment, Pastor Hoffman looked at the woman and said, uh, with all you going through, you, you need to simply tell Jesus. To his, to his surprise, the woman's face lit up. She smiled and, and she jumped up with a big, with, with big bright-eyed look on her face and say, you're right, pastor, that's it. I must tell Jesus. She, she repeated it over and over again. I must tell Jesus. I must 
tell Jesus. Elijah Hoffman, remembering those words, went home from his study that night and penned the words to the most famous hymn that we know. I must tell Jesus. I cannot bear these burdens alone. In my distress, he kindly will help me. He ever loves and cares for his own. Listen, I want to tell you right now, you can tell Jesus when you can't tell your pastor. You can tell Jesus when you can't tell your parents. You can tell Jesus when you can't tell your friends. You can tell Jesus when Facebook shuts down and Twitter won't work and Instagram is unavailable. I got to tell you that you can go to God in prayer. That, that's what you got to do. You got to tell Jesus all about it. But secondly, not only should you uh, admit your troubles, take your complaints to God, he can handle it, but, but you got to affirm your trust. David, David's enemies are all around him. And they say, this is what they say. This is the emphasis here in verse number three. There is no help for him in God. Lord, have mercy. I don't know how you feel about that, but that's the worst thing that anybody could say about you is that not even God can help him. Not even God can help her. Listen, the only way you can deal with the problems that you are facing is to turn those problems over to God. When the battles are overwhelming, you got to learn how to trust in God. After David tells God about all of the enemies and problems that he is facing, he immediately uses this conjunction. Don't run past it. You'll miss it. That word, but. That no matter how many are against me, David says, but. You ought to type, but God, in, in the midst of the comment section right now. Because you're dealing with a situation that's probably too big for you. But you ought to put a but God behind your situation. David says, but you, O oh Lord, are a shield for me. My glory and the lifter of my head. David knew that. God knew God and he appealed to him under his covenantal name, Lord, Yahweh, Jehovah, the God who keeps his word, the God of the covenant. David's assurance was based on the word of God, not on his own circumstances, not on his feelings. Listen, when you pray, you ought to pray with God's promises in your mouth because the word of God will accomplish everything that is set forth to accomplish. There is nothing that God will withhold from those who love him. I want to tell you that when you pray, you got to learn how to trust. Listen, let me tell you how David expresses his trust. He uses this, this word shield. He says, but you, O oh Lord, are a shield around me. David, in this text, tells God, I'm surrounded by my enemies, but you are a shield around me. Don't run past it. You'll miss the shout. David says, I got enemies all around. But God has gotten in between me and my enemies. I don't know how that makes you feel, but I don't care who surrounds me and God. As long as me and God is together, everything is going to be all right. He says, God, you are my protection. Ah. Psalm 18, 2 says it better than I could. The Lord is my rock and my fortress, my deliverer, my God, my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Psalm 28 and 7 says the Lord is my strength and my shield. In him my heart trusts and I am helped. My heart exalts with the song I give thanks to him. Psalm 119, Lord help me get through this quickly as I can. Verse 114 says, you are my hiding place and my shield. 
I hope in your word. Listen, the problem with us is that we are blinded by the presence of enemies who are surrounding us. But you need to take your eyes off your enemy and put your eyes on your protector. But, but not only is God his protector, David affirms that he trusted God is his provider. They, secondly, David says that God was his glory. This is the Old Testament word used to refer to the glory of God. Literally, it means dignity, honor. David says that even though my enemies are, are trying to embarrass me and dishonor me, God is my dignity. God is my provision. His victory, his glory, the, the word glory here in Hebrew meaning heavy or weight. When soldiers went out to battle, they were said to be light. After securing victory, they would come home with the spoils of war, meaning they would be able to take possession of that which their enemies had in their hand. And when they returned, they would not be light, but they would be heavy. They would be victorious. The, the heaviness of the bag that they carried home from battle was evidence that they had secured necessary victory. And David says, God has provided for me a heavy bag. He has given me a heavy victory. God God, he says that God has protected me and God has provided for me. But then he goes on to say he is the lifter, lifter of my, of my head. Even though my sins and my enemies are beating me down, God is still able to lift me up. That this, this lifting up of a bowed down head speaks to God's providing of peace to those who are troubled by enemy attacks. Listen, I want to tell you whatever you are facing, if you could take your eyes off of them and put your eyes on the Lord, he will lift you up. He will encourage you. He will pick you up. He will place your feet on solid ground. The Lord will pick you up. He, David says he is the my glory glory and the lifter, the lifter of my, of my head. David's head was lowered in shame by his son's rebellion. His, he was embarrassed by the problem that his own sin had pushed his son to the point of revolt and pushed David. Uh, this is a, a troubling situation between a father and his estranged son. They, they have problems and David is ashamed of it. But what David affirms here in this lament is that although my head is bowed, I serve a God who is able to lift me up. God is able to lift up your head. Lift up your head O ye gates and be ye lifted up ye everlasting doors and the king of glory shall come in. That's what God will do for us. God will lift you up. Listen to what Peter says in 1 Peter chapter 5 verses 10 and 11. But the God of all grace who has called you to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus after you have suffered a while, make you perfect, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you to him. Be glory and dominion forever. God is able to lift you up. But then he cried to the Lord. I want you to get the, the, the opposite of this passage before we go. At the beginning, he says that my enemies are surrounding me. And, 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 and in the middle, he, he affirms that God is protecting me. That God has gotten in between my enemies and my safety and my, and my body. And, and God is a shield, a shield of protection all around me. David you, refers to God using his covenantal name, leaning on the promises that God is able to provide. Let me ask you a question. When you're worried, do you realize that it's a, a, it's evidence that you don't trust God? You got to learn how to trust in God. That means to do what he says despite 
the evidence. That means to place your confidence in the work of God alone, not in your own ability, not in your connections, not in your education, not in your political party. No, you place your confidence in Almighty God. Uh, Psalm 34 and 8 says, O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusts in him. Isaiah chapter 26 verse 23 says, He will keep you in, here it is, perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him because he trusts in him. Blessed is the man whose trust, Jeremiah says, is in the Lord. Let life at its best can only be experienced when we trust God beyond what you can understand. When life gets hard, you got to learn how to trust God. When the police are killing black people, you got to trust God. When they're getting away with these murders, you still got to trust God. God is the only one who is worthy and is able to handle your trust. You have to put your trust not in your job, not in your children, not even in your spouse, not even in your pastor. But the text reveals that we got to learn how to trust God. Only God's hands are sure. Only God's grace is sufficient. Only God's methods are appropriate. Only God's love is real. Only God's wisdom is perfect. Only God's ways are true. God is the only one who we ought to trust. And when you trust God, listen, thirdly, you can anticipate triumph. That, that's, that's it. That David, David affirms that he does, in fact, trust God. But because he trusts God, because he has emptied himself of his burden by telling God about it, now David turns his attention towards the second or the last movement in the text. The, the, the text says, uh, verse 7 and 8, arise, O Lord. <laughs> Let me stop right there. That this, this book ends the passage for me. It, it shouts me how David here uses the same word that he used of his enemies, of his complaint about his enemies in verse 1. He says, many are arising against me. <laughs> ah, but here he tells the Lord, arise, O Lord, for you have struck my enemies on the cheek. Lord, have mercy. You have, you, 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 you slapped my enemies and it's a sign of disrespect it's a sign that God has no respect of my enemies no God doesn't have to respect my enemies because he is mightier than they he he says you slap them listen but let me tell you how you slap them there's some things in the Bible you read you ought to just laugh and smile at how God directs the handwriting of the of the author to put a piece of humor in here to make his point even more. He says, you slap the teeth out of their mouth. <laughs> that's, that's what my mother used to say when we walk away from her mumbling after she's given us some kind of directive. She said, boy, don't, don't mumble under your breath. You, I slap the taste out your mouth. That, that's what David says. He says, God slap. He doesn't literally want God to slap teeth out of their mouth, but literally what he wants is for God to render the words that come from their mouth to be unhelpful and unharmful, to render them unable to damage or kill me. He says, arise, O oh Lord. This is a great thing that when your enemies rise against you, your God can rise for you. That he broke their teeth, but then he affirms even further, he says salvation belongs to the Lord. I'm almost finished now. That David understood that salvation, both in the ultimate and in the immediate sense, was God's business. 
that David understood that if I'm going to get out of this, it's going to be because salvation comes from whom I am praying to. David understood that if he was going to get out of it, it was going to be because God got in it with him. He says, it is the property of any one nation or sect, but of the Lord God. He wants to affirm the fact that God has an obligation to save his own people. Your blessing, he says, is upon your people. Let me, let me pause here and digress for a minute. This is a morning song. This is a psalm in which David woke in the morning and remembered or recalled the day before and how God had delivered him before and he was able to sleep in the midst of this calamity. David has enemies looking for him and they're trying to kill him. They're not trying to just run him out of town. They want to run him out of life. And David, listen, goes to sleep. He trusts and anticipates victory so much so that he, he is able to lay down and sleep. That, 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 that blesses me. Because I know that many of us stay up at night worried about our children, worried about our church, worried about our community, worried about our health. But listen, I want to tell you, since God is, is not going to bed tonight, you might as well get you some sleep because he that keepeth Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. And there's no sense in you and God being up all night. To tell, type in the, in the comment section, I'm going to bed tonight. I'm going to bed tonight. I don't know what you're facing. I don't know how worried you are, but I'm still going to bed. Although when I wake up tomorrow, I may join a protest. I may write to my congressman. I may, I'm, I definitely am going to cast my ballot when, when election day comes. I'm going to do my part, but listen to me when I tell you God is going to bring deliverance. Yes, he is. Y'all ain't happy enough about that, but, but I, I close. When David says, I lay down and slept, I rise early for the Lord sustained me. David is saying, I may not have been forced, I may have been forced off of my throne, but Jehovah was still on his. <laughs> yeah, yeah God, God is still on on the throne. Listen, no matter who wins in this coming election, I want to assure you before we vote, and I do expect that if you are listening to me, wherever you are in the United States of America, you need to go and cast your ballot for your vote, your convictions, and make sure you pray before you go. God, listen, we go to Walgreens, Walmart, we go to malls, we go to work. Listen, go to the polls and cast your vote. But listen, when whoever wins takes office, they have four years to hold the seat. And then they have to run again. But I want to tell you, whether, whether your candidate wins or loses, God is going to still be on the throne. He didn't get voted in. He can't get voted out. He can do anything but fail. And you need to make sure that your confidence is to expect that God is going to be victorious. David is reminding God and himself of his past victories. We need to keep a faith file on God. You need to remember how God has performed in your past so that when problems come up in your life, you can remind yourself of what God has done in your past. Can I ask you a question? What has God done for you in the past that ought to give you confidence as you face an uncertain future? David's words are a, a war cry found in Numbers chapter 10, verses 33 through 36. That we are told there, when the hosts of Israel 
broke camp, they did so because of the cloud of the Lord, which normally rested over the Ark of the Covenant in the midst of the camp, had risen up and gone before them. Moses would cry, here it is, rise up, O Lord, and may your enemies be scattered. Whenever the cloud came to rest, Moses would say, return, O Lord, to the countless thousands of Israel. When David makes his cry, he, make, he is making a victorious cry. This is a shout of victory. He is shouting for victory before the battle has been fought. Listen, let me tell you something. You don't have to wait until the battle is over, but you can shout right now because you know in the end you're going to win. Yeah, y'all ain't with me. In a greater sense, David's cry means he's going to have victory over his enemies. But listen, one day his enemies will prevail over him. But in a greater sense, you and I would should be even more confident than King David as we face the adversities in our lives. David expresses that salvation belongs to the Lord because he knew that God had promised that he would anoint another king and establish his throne forever. And he understood that his son's presence, although temporary, on the throne was not God endorsed. And David understood that God doesn't make promises that he cannot keep. He would establish his throne and this was the plan of God. David knew that God would defeat his enemies and our greatest enemy, we can be assured God will ultimately defeat him because on the cross of Calvary, the, the enemy of our soul, Satan, thought that he had God beat. He, he put G, they put Jesus on the cross and can't you see Satan thinking that his victory, his greatest uh, enemy had been defeated but early on Sunday morning. He got up with all power and all authority in the palm of his hand. And when we get to heaven, oh, there's going to come a day that although Satan may look like he's winning right now, there's going to come a day when Satan will have to do this. Uh, go to hell. I wish I had somebody in here who could testify that you need to tell the devil, go to hell. It's all right. Type it in the comment section. It's in your Bible. Right around Revelation chapter 12. You can tell the devil that there's going to come a day when he's going to go to hell. And you're going to be able to sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing of his mercy and his grace. When those bright and blessed, he's prepared for us a place. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we will sing, we will shout the victory, victory is mine, victory is mine, I told Satan to get thee behind, because victory, I said victory, today, today, it might not look like it, it might not feel like it, it may look like your enemies are winning on every side. But God is still able to heal your body. God is still able to save your soul. I said God is still able to fix your finances. God is still able to mend your marriage. God is still able to hold you together. If you believe it, type in the comment section. Yes! 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 Y'all ain't typing. Yes! Yes! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I didn't mean to go this far, but my soul is happy because I know that it looks bad. I know that it looks hard, but God is still in
in the blessing business. I got one more thing that I need to tell you before I leave this broadcast this morning. Be not dismayed whatever be time. God will. I said God will. God will take care of you beneath his wings of love abide. God will. I said God will. God will. God will take care of you. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? I said won't he do it? I said won't he do it? Type yes. Hallelujah. David looked forward with great anticipation to a day when he would be put back on his throne. Oh, but I look forward with great anticipation to the one day when I'll see Jesus reigning on his throne forever and ever and ever and ever. Listen. This text is near and dear to my heart because probably like you, I've, my life has seen its share of adversities. I've had some difficult days and miserable nights, but the Lord has kept me. I was able to admit to God what I was going through. That's what I want you to do tonight before you go to bed. Tell God what you're facing. And then I want you to trust God and go on and go to sleep. Because you can anticipate that God is going to give his people the victory. Listen, if you are unsaved and you're listening to me today, I want to make sure that you don't log off or scroll past before you take this invitation very seriously. That here in this text, it reveals the steps to salvation, if you're careful. You can, that you got to, first of all, admit that you need God. You, you got to affirm that it's God that you trust. And then you got to commit to God in the midst of it for salvation. You see, salvation belongs to the Lord and his blessing. You can be one of his people who receive his blessing. You do what the Bible says. Confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised his son from the grave. You can be saved. Listen, I want you to be saved. I want you to become a part of our fellowship and our church. If you are listening to this, you've accepted Jesus Christ today and you would like more information about this church and this pastor and this ministry, do me a favor, just go ahead and type your name in the comment section. One of our prayer warriors will reach out to you, um, and we will let you know of the next steps. If you'd like to be a member of our church, you can go directly to our website, fill out the informational card, and someone will contact you so that you can become a part of this fellowship. And together we can take advantage of adversity. Let's pray. God, we love you and thank you for the truth and power of your word pray that even right now someone's mood was shifted their attitude was shifted towards you their their prayers are shifted towards you i pray god that you would lift up their bow down here keep them ever in your care as i pray save some lost sinner today if you do it be careful to give you praise glory and honor in jesus name Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much.
comes in the morning And troubles, they don't last always For there's a friend in Jesus Who will wipe your tears away And if your heart is broken just lift your hands and say, oh, I know that I can make it. Mm, I know that I can stand. And no matter what may come my way, my life is in your hands. I can take it. Oh, with him I know I can stand. And no matter what may come my way, my life is in your hands. Hey, I know that I. this worship experience today I certainly was it is my prayer that even as you were blessed that you gave consideration to what God perhaps is leading you to do in your life if the Lord has spoken to you and you would like to give your life to Jesus Christ the Bible says if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised his son from the grave you can be saved we certainly offer Christ to you this day for the greatest thing that God has ever done for any of us is he sent his only son to die for our sins. Now all you have to do is accept him as your savior and Lord and you can be saved and be entitled to eternal life as we are. Or perhaps you are saved and just looking for a church home to connect with. We here at Union Tabernacle are endeavoring to impact the church inside and out and the community with cross-centered ministry you'd like to join with us as we attempt to impact the world through Jesus Christ all you have to do is go to our church's website and fill out a membership form and we would love to contact you and bring you in in order to get you acclimated and go through orientation for membership into this wonderful fellowship of believers either way we pray that you would join with us again on next Sunday as we look to continue this wonderful sermon series. Additionally, I want to remind those of you who are members of this church already of our obligations and commitments to give consistently, sacrificially, and regularly. I pray um, that you will pay your tithe. You can do so through the Givelify application. You can go to our website and click on the Give tab. Also, and give through um, PayPal. Or you can mail your gifts here to the church directly at 6623 South Stewart, Chicago, Illinois, 60621. We would love to hear from you. If you'd like to email us, instant message us, and let us know how you've enjoyed these services or what we might perhaps could do for you or your family during these times, we'd love to hear from you. In the meantime, we'll be praying for you, and we love you, and we'll see you 
next week. God bless.